that I would spend the time with Mary Rose here to build uh, some useless, something useless. Um, I got a couple of ideas. Um, useless, let's call it art. Art. Now, uh, yes, I am Tim. Uh, one of the ways that I built was, was this way. And it will take you to a website that, uh, you know, doesn't really make, oh, Mary Rose, I don't like that one. Doesn't really make much sense. Um, and these are done to build. And I thought, you know, why not build one today? So uh, I'm going to create a new folder um, in my desktop. I'm going to call it useless art. I sort of had the idea of uh, doing something in the kind of Pete Mon Mondrian sort of style. Maybe uh, a make your own, yeah, make your own Mondrian Piet, Piet Mondrian. Um, and so, yes, uh, so I'm going to open up that folder, code desktop, useless art, and there's nothing really in there. I'm going to create and save an index.html, um, and I'll also save an index.js, we'll use some JavaScript. Uh, if I go to my HTML file and just create, you know, something empty, this is an empty file, uh, and I reference the script in there, source equals dot slash index dot js, script, and then I should be able to uh, right click this, reveal in the finder, I'll make this a little bit bigger. Finder, whoops, and then open with Chrome. Right, there's my blank and empty site. This is, yeah, seems to be working all right. So, what do I want to do to make a Mondrian artwork? I'm going to use the web canvas, I'm going to create a big rectangle. And I was thinking, every time you click on the screen, we'll split that rectangle in two and maybe give it a different color. We'll make the whole web page this, uh, which should, I don't know, essentially kind of aid to its useless-esque art style. Um, so, yeah, let's, let's do that. Instead of that, I'm going to do a canvas. Canvas. Uh, let's give it an ID of canvas. Also put some styles in here. Style. Style. Just some kind of cookie cutter box. Sizing for box. HTML color body. Margin. Zero. Padding. Zero. Width. 100%. Hi, 100%. I just wanted to take up the the full screen. I'm sure there's a better way to do this. What do you think, Mary Rose? Hi, 100%. Okay. Canvas. 100%. Hi, 100%. Let's see what that looks like. Yeah, you can sort of see that the canvas takes up everything, which is kind of what I'm going for here. Um, okay, so I want to do some styles like that. Make it a little bit clear. Uh, okay, so let's do some JavaScript now. Uh, const canvas equals document dot query selector id canvas uh, const context so the context is what you use to draw in a web canvas equals canvas dot get context 2d console dot log canvas let's log it out here yeah there we go there's a canvas that's what I'm looking for 
Um, right, so canvas dot width equals medium dot inner width. I'm going to set the sizes. Height, H-E-I-G-H-T. Um, cool, so yeah, like I said, the way that I was thinking of doing this is sort of having a rectangle, it would be a big fat rectangle, and when you click somewhere on the screen, we'll, we'll split that rectangle into two. Um, so, let's rectangles. Let's make a, uh, I mean, they could be squares, but rectangles are fine. Variable name, an array of rectangles. Uh, let's make a, a function called create rectangle, rectangle M G L E. Uh, X, Y, width, height, H, E, I, G, H, T. And let's make a function called draw rectangles. So it works. Uh, right. So create, let's, let's create a rectangle. Uh, X is 10, Y is 10, width can be 100. Height can be 50. And uh, create rectangles is going to go rectangles.push x, y, width, height. So that's going to create uh, this sort of object that's going to sit in the array. And then to draw rectangles, we have to use the canvas's draw API, um, the context API to essentially draw the canvas, uh, draw a rectangle. So let's go rectangles dot for each Rectang rectangle. Wow, this IntelliSense is serious. Go away. Sublimes really not happy, huh? Let's save it. Oh wow, it's fully frozen on there. Oh, I'll close Sublime and open it again. That's what you get for using the, uh, the beta. Okay. Uh, rectangle. Now, context.gamepath. Context.rect. Rectangle.x. Maybe this is it. Let's just set myself to just plain old JavaScript. Rectangle dot width. Rectangle dot height. Context dot n close path. Context dot stroke. And Called draw rectangles afterwards. Let's see if that does anything. Yeah, there we go. There's a tiny rectangle sitting in the corner. Um, good, 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 good. Let's make that line width. Line width equals eight, ten maybe. And let's see how much thicker that makes the rectangle. Yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good, okay. So the thought is uh, we're gonna create an original rectangle that's gonna be zero, zero, uh, window dot inner width, window dot inner height. It's gonna take up the full, the full screen. Yeah, you can sort of see the, the edges in the corner there. Exactly what I'm going for. Um, right, so the next thing I wanna do is allow people to interact with the with the system so i'm going to collect their clicks uh, and when they click on a rectangle i'm going to split that rectangle into two rectangles um, and then i'll draw those rectangles um, i'm sure that's not really how he created the art but it seems like a logical falling through to to sort of do that so let me do that um, right. Let's do canvas dot add event listener. Click. 
and we'll make it call a function rectangle click. Now let's create that function. Rectangle click on let's just call it on screen click. No, on rectangle click is fine. And this gets the event. Um, <clears throat> now the thought is that we're going to have multiple rectangles. So when they click in here, we want to find which rectangle they clicked. You know, at, at the start, we sort of know that they're just splitting the zero, the only rectangle in the, in the array. Um, so maybe that's fine. Let's, let's stub it out for now and do const uh, clicked index equals zero. And what we'll do is to do find the actual rectangle that was clicked. But for now, let's just say they have clicked the only rectangle that we know is on the screen. Um, and what we what we're gonna do is uh, let's say const clicked rectangle equals rectangles zero. So they clicked the zero rectangle um, and where am I? click the zero rectangle I'm going to remove it from the from the system rectangles dot splice uh, clicked <laughs> I know I see you click index one and then we're going to say split rectangle and we're going to pass in the clicked rectangle. So even though we're removing it here, uh, this split function is going to add two rectangles in its place, you know, essentially creating split. So let's create another function here. Split rectangle. Honestly, we should be checking if this is working. Function console.log split rectangle. There's a lot to go in kind of one big clump. Let's see if we got, if I click, yeah, split rectangle. So it's calling that function uh, down here. So the click is being collected. It's calling rectangle click. Rectangle click is saying, hey, they've clicked the zero rectangle. Uh, this is the zero rectangle's actual item. Let's remove it from the list and then let's call this split. Uh, split rectangle, let's say split re rectangle at uh, and e dot um, so this is the event which just essentially says this is where the mouse has clicked um, I think it just has an x let's, let's pass it through as an object e d, uh, x equals e event dot x y equals event dot y Bit of a typo there. Rectangle. Split rectangle at. Let's see here. This is the position. Split rectangle. Rectangle. Position. No. Okay. Let's see how that goes. Next, if I click somewhere. Yeah, so split rectangle. I've got the information and I've got the x and the y data that I need, which is good. I don't know if that's too small. Um, oh no, I need that. Okay, so what's next? What's next? Mm -hmm. Splitting the rectangle. Um, so what I want to do when you split is create two new rectangles. Rectangles don't push. I create two of them, one on either side uh, of the rectangle. Let's, let's make this a little easier for myself here and do minus clicked rectangle dot x minus clicked rectangle dot y. This will sort of mean that the x and y position that we're getting are relative to the rectangle that we are talking about rather than the entire position on the screen. Um, which I think is just going to make this next part a little bit easier. 
uh, if I was splitting a rectangle, then the new rectangle would be the same, the same x position, right? And uh, uh, the y would be rectangle dot y. God, that's IntelliSense all over me right now. Uh, the width would be the position dot x. So let's say they are. We want to cut it in half. Then the position dot x of this one would be this, and the height would be rectangle dot height. And then the other one, the other side, the x would be dot x plus split, uh, not split out, uh, position plus position dot x, right? So it's going to be moved over. It's going to be the x is going to be essentially the x coordinate of where they clicked relative to the old rectangle. Y still going to be rectangle dot y. Yep. Let's see how we go here. Uh, the width would be rectangle dot width minus position dot x. Yes. And the height would be the same rectangle dot height. Okay, so we remove the rectangle, we add two rectangles, and then let's call draw rectangles. And let's run that and see if we can make any mistakes. So the rectangles are drawn. Yeah, so if I click I'm now splitting my rectangles vertically into as many pieces as I feel. Um, so that's good. Uh, what would be next? So we, we, we need bi-directional splitting. We, we need to be splitting them horizontally as well. So maybe we'll do something like every rectangle split uh, changes. So let's do let split direction equal verti vertical equal true. And we'll use this, we'll say if split direction vertical, is this splitting vertical or horizontal would you say? <laughs> vertical I think. We'll do it this way, uh, otherwise. will split it in the other direction. So if we're splitting in the other way, it's exactly it's, it's the same rectangles dot push. We're pushing two rectangles into the system. Uh, these ones are going to be different. The x is going to be the rectangle dot x. I'm trying to ugh, I'm trying to get in my head. The y the rectangle dot y. The first one is like that. It's the same as, as splitting in the other direction. Uh, the width, rectangle dot width. So it's all, it's it's like this rectangle here. Uh, it's just going in the other direction. So where this one assumes the height for both, these ones are going to assume the width for both because we're splitting in the different in the different direction. Uh, so the height is the confusing one, and the height will be. Rectangle dot. It'll we'll just be split at the y, right? Position. The y. Because this, because the position is relative. I think that seems right now. Rec rectangle dot x. Ugh. Width, rectangles of width, 
Let's see you marry us. I see. Uh, and height. Rectangle dot height minus position dot y. So that one is, is the equivalent of this one. Just the width and the height are switched. Split direction vertical. And then we just change the split direction after every click equals not split direction vertical. Let's see how it's done here. Yeah. Click. Oh. Well, it's something. It's funny that that has split right there. Uh, that's right. So the, the problem, and I guess we didn't go back down and fix that, is we're always saying that they've clicked the zero rectangle. Whereas what we need to do is find the actual rectangle that they have clicked, right? Um, yes. So instead of click that index being zero, it equals rectangles dot find. Find index. Rectangle. Ah, it's got stuck again. Ah, it's so frustrating. Open it again. Where was I? Here. Right. Uh, so this will return true if we have found the rectangle. So event.x is greater than rectangle.x and and oops. Y is less than rectangle dot, dot y. And so that means it's greater than the top right position. Then, oh uh, wait, let's, let's do e dot x is less than rectangle dot x plus rectangle dot width. Okay, so it's within the horizontal bounds e dot y is greater than rectangle dot y and e dot y is less than rectangle dot y plus rectangle dot height return true format that, that nice and clean so if the x is higher than the x, the x is less than the height, uh, the width, sorry. So that means it's vertically in the right position, and this would mean that it's horizontally in the right position. That makes sense to me. Let's see what happens if I run it. Oh no. Still splitting the wrong rectangle. Ah, because I need to put the clicked index into this. How about that? It's still a little wonky. It's funny because this rectangle is correct. This one is maybe wrong. I done some have I done some calculations wrong here. It's the, it's this vertical one that's a little bit funny. The x is rectangle dot x, the y is rectangle dot y, the width is rectangle dot width, the height is position dot y. Makes sense. x, y, the width is always going to be 100% of the width, and the width does seem to be correct. The height, rectangle dot height minus position dot y. Seems correct. Am I maybe doing these positions wrong? Rectangle e dot y, rectangle dot x, rectangle dot y. Hmm. Time to debug. Okay, so we know that the vertical click is happening correctly. The horizontal click is the one that is going wrong. 
cross one. Makes sense. The second one, they both have the correct x position, which is, th which is this. They both have the correct y position, which is this. Ah, oh, wait, they, they don't both have the correct y position. One of them needs to split from here, one of them needs to split from here. So that is wherein the problem lies. Yes, this one here, rectangle dot y, uh, plus I should have noticed that here we have to add to the x uh, position of y. Okay, Let's see how it goes. Nice. You know, never, it's never right if it works the first go, you know. Uh, okay, I like this. So I would say we're pretty on target here. This is some pretty Mondrian-esque creations that I can create. Uh, if I click in the same spot twice, I get an error. That does make sense. Ooh. You want to go down? Come on, there you go. Uh, let's just say if clicked index equals 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 negative one, they're clicking this. You'd be clicking the same spot here. Uh, let's just change this. What, what did we call the variable? Vertical split direction vertical. Let's just change the direction and equals and not split direction vertical. Yeah, let's just change the direction of it that way. If I click twice and then click again, yeah, I can create a vertical. That's a little hack, I guess, for power users. <laughs> okay, so this is cool. This is cool. The only thing left, really, and, you know, we're getting through this quick, but, you know, the kind of fun thing of building sites is... It doesn't really have to be all that crazy. The only thing left, I would say, is adding color to them. Let's create a function, function, get color. And the color, you know, when I was looking at the, the Mondrians, they're not particularly evenly spread. Um, I would say X percentage white. Let's pick one to scrape the colors out of, actually. These look good. Oh, it's a nifty little tool called the color meter. Uh, this can be the white. Um, colors equals. Okay, this can be the red. Doo -doo. Go again. This can be the blue. One more time. kind of want them to be more white and I can probably do some probability for this but I think I'm just going to cheat and do and paste white in here four times that way when I say return uh, colors math dot, what is, how do you do math math dot floor math dot random do do Times oh, it's not length. Okay, so this will, this should return a random color from this that is mostly white. Uh, let's check it. Get color. One. Yep. Different colors each time. Mostly white. Honestly, barely white. Let's like make it five times more. 
The other way would be to get a random number and say if it's below 0 and 5, do the, do the 5. If it's below the others, do the others. This works fine. Maybe I'll clean it up later. Uh, pretty cheeky. <clears throat> okay. The other thing, yeah, so, so let's put the colors in here. Color, get color. So each of these splits, they get their own color. The IntelliSense has jammed itself on my screen again. And there's no getting rid of it. Gosh, Sublime Text Beta. <laughs> I should have. Uh, I should have really prepared for that one. Okay, get color, get color, get color, get color, get color, get color. Um, and when we draw the rectangles, uh, I'll make the uh, make the original one white. We draw the rectangles. Where's that function gone? Here. We have to set the color. So we have context.dill style equals dill color. Fill style. Context.fill. I think this is how it works. It might be fill rect. Okay, it works. It works well. It's funny that the original one filled uh, in not the white color. Not sure why. Let's try and debug that. Color. Undefined, undefined, undefined. Create rectangle. Color. Color. Ah, it's because we didn't really end up using this function. That is what this was supposed to be. So let's change them all to that. Honestly, we could have just pushed it in each of the other places. If we wanted to do something like add color, as I just did then, we could probably then remove this. Oh, let's look at it. Because I might actually use that. Okay. There we go. Now that I push those to create a rectangle. Uh, I've sent it down an object. Oh, going down a nasty puff. How about I just leave these, these rectangles to push? We can clean up the code later. Nice. I like it. I like it, I like it, I like it. You know, we could do a lot of different things here. We could sort of make it so that when you split, your color is split between the colors that you've got. But 
I kind of like the idea that if you're going to click something, you could completely sacrifice that, that color. Very colorful one. What do you reckon? It's fun. I like it. Okay. So, what I was thinking I could do next is uh, just put it on a site, put it on a website. Um, let's get a domain. Google.com. I'm going to copy it. I'm going to copy it. I'm going Piet Mondrian. Mondrian. Is Mondrian.com taken? It would be. Let's have a look what's on there anyway. Just because. Mondro page, Mondri.com, well, most Mondrian, Mondrian.page, Mondrian.online, Mondrian.page, only $10. Domain names, tricky. How about Mondrian and me? Mondrian and me, $12. Yeah, take it. Let's make a twelve dollar a year commitment. Go to cart. Twelve dollars a year. You and one not me. Okay. I'm gonna check. I'm gonna buy this. Let me just turn off the uh, turn off the um, streams so you can not see my. Credit card details. It's the mullet, quarantine mullet. Buy. That's a buy. Mondrian and me. Registering. Mondrian. Mondrian. I'm always worried that I spell it wrong. Okay. Okay, let's get it up. Let's get it on a uh, on a website. Uh, first thing I want to do is make a GitHub repository for it. Andrian and me. Useless website. Honoring Piet Andrian. Public create repository. Okay. Um that's good. Let's yeah, let's get this on Git, and then we can use something like Netlify to get it on the web. Um, right. Let's get a terminal window open here. CD. Uh, what did I call it? Slis art. Git init. What do they say? Git add dot commit. Andrian. Get. Just copy that code right here. Get push origin dash u origin. Uh, get push dash u origin name. Get remote add origin. 
me look. Ah, uh, didn't make the branch the main branch as you. Let me just. Oh, that origin already exists. Okay, the main branch in useless odd is now uh, pointing to this. So if I refresh in me, I'll have it. My index. Uh, HTML, my index.js. Uh, I'll fill in this readme later. Um, maybe I'll make some cleaner changes to the site as well, but I thought it would be fun to kind of go through the whole process of things online. So let me log into Netlify. Uh, Netlify is a ridiculously good service for hosting simple and useless websites like this. Uh, I can set it up to go from Git. Let's authorize it. Mondrian. I'll die if I have made a spelling mistake in this. Right, branch to deploy, the main branch. Publish directory is just slash. I think I can just do nothing there at the play side. So Netlify is going to pull the code from, yeah, pull the code from that Git repository, put it on the site. So now it is on youthful Albatani. Um, and then the only thing left is to kind of link it to my domain. So let's do it. Mondrian and me. Mondrian and me.com. Verify. I am the owner, add the domain. Options. Set up Netlify DNS, verify, yes, add domain. Add new record, Ooh, no, that's not, whoa, that's not what I want. Here we go, I want these. I want to put them into my Google domains, custom name servers, one, two, And four. Save. It may take some time. Yes, change the name servers anyway. They will take effect in the next 48 hours. Done. From Mondrian and me. From our histories. These have been relatively fresh again. Yeah, verified. Mondrianme.com. Hey, how about that? Very quick, very nifty, very fun little website. Um, yeah. Verify DNS. Yeah, there we go. Let's verify DNS. I want that not secure to jump into secure. It will do it eventually. But hey, it's a productive, productive evening. I'm happy with it. Mondrian and me. Um, yeah, so I'll probably make a few changes to this uh, in the meantime. But the fun thing is, you know, the code is up on GitHub at T. Holman. Uh, so you can follow me there. And, uh, yeah, Twitter and all that, I'll probably, yeah, make a few little adjustments. Maybe I'll sort out this color, uh, and you'll be able to follow those codes on GitHub. GitHub.com slash tholman is my GitHub, and it will be in there. So, I think that's that. Peace.